Salam, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Workers across India observe an historic strike. The impeachment motion against Peru's president fails. New evidence uncovered in Mexico's Ayotzinapa case. And Israel hosts a first summit with Arab nations. An estimated 200 million workers across India took part in an historic general strike on the 28th of March. The mass action was organized by 10 central trade unions under the banner Save People, Save the Nation. It was to protest the anti-worker and anti-farmer policies of the right-wing Narendra Modi government. The strike united workers across sectors including banking, transport, coal, oil, postal and income tax. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Haryana, West Bengal and Tripura were among the states which witnessed particularly major participation. Workers in other places including Punjab, Goa, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh and Arunachal Pradesh also organized agitations. Thousands of people set up rail and road blockades in different parts of the country. Major industrial areas, shops and banks were shut down. The strike also brought together millions of workers from the unorganized sector, including construction and government scheme workers. The work stoppage continued for a second day on the 29th, with disruptions reported in banking and transport services. Bank workers are protesting the government's move to privatize two major public sector banks, while unions have placed a list of 12 demands before the government. These include the scrapping of four labor codes, which will weaken workers' rights. Other demands include the acceptance of the six-point charter presented during the farmers' protest. The strike also raised issues of income support, social security and regularization of contract workers, protection for frontline workers and minimum wage for scheme workers. They've also asked for investment in crucial public sectors, including agriculture, education and health. An opposition-led attempt to impeach Pedro Castillo has failed in Peru's Congress. The chamber had voted 76 to 41 to initiate proceedings against the president on the 14th of this month. The motion was introduced by popular renovation with the backing of other right-wing parties. Castillo was accused of corruption, moral incapacity and contradictions and lies during fiscal investigations and ministerial appointments. The allegations included influence peddling in police and military promotions and the existence of a shadow cabinet. Castillo was also accused of treason for merely saying that he would be open to a referendum to allow Bolivia access to the Pacific. After a marathon debate on Monday, the impeachment motion received 55 votes in favour, 54 against and 19 abstentions. This fell short of the 87-vote threshold required to remove a president from office. Speaking before Parliament on Monday, Castillo said that he would always squarely face the nation because he was subject to the rules of due process. He has also rejected the right-wing's allegation uh, and called them ba baseless. He's also accused certain sectors of trying to orchestrate a coup and carrying out a smear campaign in the media. Castillo welcomed Monday's outcome as a victory for responsibility as well as democracy. The left-wing president's government has undergone four cabinet reshuffles in the past eight months due to opposition pressure. Several ministers have been forcibly dismissed and there have now been two unsuccessful vacancy motions against Castillo. New evidence has implicated Mexico's armed forces in the disappearance of the Ayotzinapa 43. On September 26, 2014, students from a Normalista teacher training school were abducted in Iguala. The former Peña Nieto administration claimed that corrupt policemen in the city had taken the students. They were supposedly handed over to a drug cartel which then killed them. An investigation has found that Navy and Army officials knew that the students had been taken by criminals. They then hid evidence that could have helped locate the students. The armed forces also hid the fact that the Ayotzinapa 43 were being surveilled leading up to and during their abduction. These findings are part of a third report submitted by the interdisciplinary group of independent experts. It revealed that the students were being watched because of their school's strong ties to left-wing movements in Mexico. After the students disappeared in 2014, the government claimed that their bodies had been burned at a dump in the town of Cocula. The remains were then allegedly thrown in the San Juan River. The GIEI has now revealed that state agents manipulated the site of the dump. Several packages in white bags were unloaded, burned and then spread across a ravine leading to the river. Investigators have discovered around 187 skeletal remains so far. DNA tests have found positive matches for three of the 43 Ayotzinapa students. The GIEI 
has also stated that they continue to be denied access to key pieces of information in this case. And our final story, Israel held the first summit with Arab countries on its soil after the normalization of relations on March 27th and 28th. Foreign ministers from Egypt, Bahrain, the UAE and Morocco were present at the meeting in the Negev desert. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken was also in attendance. The summit was held immediately after the trilateral meeting between Egypt, the UAE and Israel last week. The stated agenda of the talks was to discuss the war in Ukraine and issues of cooperation between the participants. However, Israel used the opportunity to push for a common regional strategy against Iran. This comes just as the crucial talks to finalize the nuclear deal are ta taking place and hoping to be concluded in Vienna. Israel has been a staunch opponent of the negotiations. It claims that the removal of US sanctions will strengthen Iranian influence in the region. Israel has boosted its engagements with individual Gulf countries since the US mediated Abraham Accords. The summit has led to speculation that it is now trying to exploit similar apprehensions of these countries regarding Iran. Both Bahrain and the UAE are part of the Saudi-led military coalition that is waging a war on Yemen. These countries have accused Iran of supporting the Houthis. Sunday's summit was also condemned by various Palestinian factions who have rejected the normalization deals. These have been deemed a betrayal of the Palestinian people and the Arab Peace Initiative. No Palestinian representation was invited to the summit. Hamas and Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shatai also issued statements condemning the normalization meetings. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more details on all of these stories, head to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.